Newest banking services was previously reviewed by banking experts from New Zealand, but a decision on which financial institution to provide services to the island has not been finalised. According to Honourable Premier Toke Talangi, there must be careful scrutiny of what is needed to include in the banking service for Niue. At this time, we're still uh, carrying out the investigations that the two consultants who have been working on us with us have been working and will be here over the, over the next week and we'll be discussing with them the, um, the progress to date with respect to the banks that are interested, the type of conditions that they are looking at, the type of conditions that we are looking at and seeing whether we can match and correlate them to ensure that what they want and what we want are uh, amenable to both of us and we can achieve both our objectives. I mean, they are providing banking services for us and we are providing banking services for the people of our country. How likely is that to succeed? Looking at the previous years, we've had WISP back and then we also ha currently also have BSB. It's never easy. The fact that WISP back was here, the post office before that, um, BSB now uh, indicates the fact that for small countries like Niue, um, Nauru, they don't have a bank as I understand it, um, it's not going to be easy, but at the same time, I think there are there are situations here that will attract the bank to come and provide services here in whatever form, and we're still examining and talking to the banks about that at the present time. Uh, there are a number of things that we need to talk about, and, and you know the uh, the New Zealand we're under the realm of New Zealand, therefore we've got to comply with some of their provisions. This is the bank in New Zealand, not necessarily us. Uh, the Reserve Bank uh, rules and regulations in New Zealand when they are operating in an overseas uh, domicile country like ours. Um, there are other things that we need to ensure that we comply with internationally, uh, like the tax evasion um, legislation that, or uh, presentations that we're making and, and the legal offices in Paris this week making the presentation or next week making the presentation on our behalf taking us from the grey list to the white list and so on. All of those things that we need to put in place to ensure that they feel safe and we feel safe about the services that whatever bank we ch finally choose will uh, will uh, come to New Way and, and make services available to us. Um, there are a number of things that we have to consider. It, if it was easy, it would have been done last year. <laughs> but it isn't. And therefore, we're, we're taking this very slowly, very carefully. Uh, to ensure that what we agree to in the end will be for the benefit of the bank as well as the benefit of the people in, in government of Niue. Premier Talangi also said the government has not yet decided on the assistance it will give the new bank, if any. It depends. Uh, there are certain investments that we have, the trust fund, that this bank may necessarily want as part of the, uh, the arrangements and we're happy to consider the proposals from them with regard to that. Um, there are other the, the, the government uh, accounts are being held at West Bank at the present moment. Those could be transferred through. So there are other in, there are incentives. There are 25,000 new ones living in New Zealand who could transfer to uh, whatever bank that we finally choose uh, to add to the number of uh, people in their bank accounts and so on. And the small number that are that are here at the present moment. So a number of things that we're looking at and and working through with them to see what are the things, what are the best matches that we need to put in place to ensure that in fact we get a banking service appropriate to us as well as meet their own requirements from New Zealand. The decision on which bank is suitable to operate out of Niue is expected to finalise by the end of the year. As of next week, New Zealand Immigration Visa Services previously available in Niue, will no longer be accessible at the New Zealand High Commission's office in Tapio. This was the advisory received yesterday. As New Zealand makes changes to its domestic affairs, it is also de-establishing some of its international services. The public are also advised to contact the office for clarification if necessary. Otherwise, all information pertaining to the new changes and applications can be accessed at www.immigration.govt.nz.
New York Police Chief Mark Chenery is officially off duty and due to depart the island this week, taking with him fond memories of New York. Mark says as the family fell in love with the island and what was initially meant to be a contracted two-year posting was extended to three years and a month. Time has gone by very quickly. We spoke with Chief Chenery about his thoughts of his term on the island. I'm really pleased with how we've got the whole standard of the Nui Police Force up. We haven't focused on one individual um, with the training that we've been able to provide from um, New Zealand Aid when we had the recruit instructor come over that trained the whole of the police. Um, the traffic specialist guys that came over I thought was a real highlight. And I think um, just in the last week with that um, very well-timed visit from former Chief of Police Rowley Williams means that the uh, the new chief, when he arrives, can take on the new mental under the 3P program, and there's some really exciting opportunities there. What would you say uh, were some of the most challenging uh, things during your term here? I think it's always challenging for a, for an expat police officer, especially when um, you don't speak the local language. Um, I probably needed to take Ollie along, my youngest, um, to a lot of things because he picked it up really quickly, whereas. Um, I pretended to pick up more body language. Um, it's always hard when you're in an isolated place and you don't have the resources that we're used to, or that certainly that I was used to back in New Zealand. Um, and the isolation sometimes is tough, but uh, all these things are, are able to be overcome. Uh, and as I said, look, the support that I've had from the community and certainly from my police staff has, has made the three years just fly by. Mr Chernery says that they have built lifelong friendships that will always be a draw card for the family to return and the time in Niue has been a great learning opportunity. The Chanery family have also taken a little piece of Niue with them. Two pussy cats that came out of the bush, um, probably in about just after we got here in 2009, uh, that have been aptly named Wallace and Pearl. Um, they flew out last Friday, not in business class, but uh, in the cargo hold, and they're now at a quarantine station in Levin, so um, waiting to come down home to Wellington. So. Uh, We'll have part of Nui with us uh, for quite some time. Mark says that this is not goodbyes as the family have formed ties to the island and a few last thoughts before heading back to New Zealand. Where to from here? Back to a seven degree Wellington southerly by the sounds of things. Um, yeah, I head back uh, to Auckland and then I'm driving down to Wellington to catch up with the family and I'm pretty much straight back into it uh, on the 24th of September. Um, back at Wellington Central, back to my shift commander's role that I was doing before I came here, which I'd only done for a few months. And it was probably time as much as we would like to have stayed for perhaps a fourth year. Um, it was time to get back. I've been away from New Zealand really with the Solomons in 2008 for nearly four years. So it's sort of time to get some runs on the board, so to speak, back in New Zealand. And, and um, there's probably a lot changed. Um, policing doesn't uh, sit still. Uh, and I know there's new strategies that uh, the New Zealand police have introduced, um, which I'll have to get on board with. All I can say is thank you for your support and continue to support your police. Um, they're a young bunch, but they're a very talented bunch. Um, sometimes they're going to make decisions that not everyone agrees with, but they will make them um, honestly uh, and well-meaning with the best intent. Um, so if the community supports the police, then you'll have a good, uh, solid police force. We wish Mark and the Chenery family all the best. 22 students from Niue High School and the University of the South Pacific about to embark on Japan as the relationship between one of the powerhouses in Asia increases its relations with many of the Pacific Island nations. The program, called the Kitsuna Project, was launched by the University of the South Pacific in partnership with the Government of Japan. Kitsuna means strong or bonds of friendship is a project for a two-week study tour of Japan for both high school and universities from 14 Pacific Island countries. It hoped to provide the opportunity for Pacific Island youth and future leaders to obtain perspective in the, into the Japanese way of life and promote the understanding about the recovery efforts after the earthquake and tsunami that occurred in Japan in March of 2011. Nui's group will be led by youth officer Ms. Charlene Tokyuha tomorrow and will return on the first week of October. And to end our news bulletin, during the last two decades, the world has made huge strides in reducing child deaths through new vaccines, better health care, investments in education and strong commitments from governments. 
This week, UNICEF and partners released new figures showing that the number of children dying before their fifth birthday has nearly halved from 12 million in 1990 to 6.9 million in 2011. Yet, despite progress here in the Pacific, over 15,000 children still die annually, or at least 40 child deaths every day from preventable causes. In the Pacific Papua New Guinea, Federated States of Micronesia, Kiribati, Nauru and Tuvalu carry the highest burden of child mortality, with under five mortality rates above 30 per 1,000 child. Children from poor rural areas are much more likely to die before their fifth birthday than those in urban areas, and disadvantaged and marginalized populations bear the burden of child deaths. It is reported that the biggest killers of young children here in the Pacific are pneumonia, diarrhea, malaria, low birth weight and undernutrition, or causes that can be prevented or diseases that can be treated at a relatively low cost. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.